Let's play around with curves again, and I've got Canyon TIF image open from your exercise files. What I want to do here is I want to increase the saturation values of the colors in this image without using something like vibrance or hue and saturation, and it will give us another look at curves and how it works. But we also need to look at color spaces here. If you look at the RGB color space, red, green, and blue, all of the colors that you see in this image and any other image that you ever put into Photoshop will be made of the colors red, green, and blue mixed together. Now the exact opposites of red, green, and blue when you overlap them are cyan, magenta, and yellow. And in the previous lesson, the reason we got rid of the yellow in an RGB image is by adding more of the opposite value, which was blue. So you can see there are opposite values. Additive color is a projective device like uh, your monitor. It doesn't need an external light source to show you the colors. Subtractive color, on the other hand, requires a light source. And that light source actually contains the color. The colors bounce off the paper or whatever it is, and what's left comes back to your eyes. Subtractive color. But the opposites of C and Y are RGB. So you've got the idea that additive and subtractive color is used in a computer to actually add or subtract just about any colors that you want. So additive color is projective in a sense, and subtractive color requires a light source, and they're the exact opposite values of each other. But let me throw one more color space in there called LAB. LAB is unique in the fact that it is device independent. Now what does that mean? Well, it means it's not dependent upon the device to interpret its color. This may have happened to you. You open a nice image in Photoshop and it looks pretty good to you. And what you want to do at that point is maybe move it into another program like Quark Express or Microsoft Publisher, something like that, and the colors have shifted. Well, it's because those programs interpret RGB differently, but they don't interpret LAB differently. And what I tell my students sometimes, if you are having trouble with an RGB image, moving it and printing it and getting the right colors, you might actually go to the word image on the pull down menu, go down to mode and select LAB before you save it and move it into the other program. What do we want to do? Let's turn these off here. I like this image, but I think it needs more saturation values in those colors. And I don't want to do it through vibrance or through U and saturation. I want to use curves. Well, let's look at this. Start with background. First, convert the image into LAB. Let me move channels over here so you can see the change happen. There's my RG, and let's go ahead and get B down there too. RGBs. Go up to the word image, go down to mode and select LAB and watch the channels. You now have three. You have a lightness channel, an A channel, and a B channel. Now they look real weird. Lightness is the grayscale equivalent of the image. We talked about that actually earlier in this lesson series. A goes from red to cyan and B goes from blue to yellow. And that's where your colors are based on the shifts of gray. I want to add some more saturation to this image, a little bit more color saturation. So if we go back to LAB, which brings the image back for us, let's go ahead and go into curves one more time. What do we do? Nothing in lightness. What we want to do is go into the A channel first. See, we have a very narrow range here on color. Move this slider over. Actually, let's alt click to get a 10 grid. I'm going to move that bottom slider over to about the grid point just before that thing goes up there. And I need to balance it out on this side. So we're going to put it right about at the half point there. So we're going to come here. This is an easier way to do it. Just use that little slider down here. We're going to put it right about there. Now let's do the same thing to the B channel. Now what we're trying to do again is balance them out. We'll get right about there and move this one over the other way. That's going to be about at the halfway point again. Now it's pretty intense, I want to tell you, but I'm going back to my visual view. It's got too much blue in it. So what I need to do to get rid of some of that blue is back it off here. Something maybe like that. Now look at the intensity of the colors in this image. And we can go ahead and get out of here. We can come back up to the word image mode and now bring it back into RGB color. And it wants me to flatten that curves adjustment layer, which is fine. 
now we have a much more vibrantly saturated image by first converting a typical RGB image into LAB and pushing in on the A and the B channels to bring in the vibrancy of the colors and then bringing it right back again. If we go up here through the magic of history, we can see the original and we can see what we did. Added a lot more vibrancy, didn't we? All with curves. On to the next.